everyone, and welcome back to another section of Artificial Intelligence for the Jenkins MBA. Um, in this section, we're going to talk a little bit about how to create functions in R. Uh, and the reason why is because we need this tool in order to really take advantage of the machine learning packages that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, so right here in this case, I am actually um, kind of demonstrating how to write a function. And Functions are very useful. Everything we've done so far up until this point has been using functions that already exist in R. But a lot of times you're gonna to wanna to create your own function so that you can create your own functionality within it, right? And so I created a simple little function right here called myFun, uh, which is a function. And the way, you, the way you do this in R is that myFun is essentially, you can think of it as the name of a function. You're gonna assign something to that name and you're going to assign to that name a particular function so you write the word function you write what the inputs are right x y and z in this case you do this curly brace to start the function and then you can do a whole bunch of computation if you want in here you can you know like a is y times z x sorry and b is um you know x times y right um and then you could say z uh, you know, return a plus b if you want. So you don't you don't have to do just one return, right? But here I have a very simple function that is just going to take x times y and add z to it, and that's all it's going to do. Um, and so let's we're going to go ahead and execute that function. So you have to you know be, you can't just use just because you type it into your script doesn't mean the function is already in R, right? You need to actually execute the function in order to include it. So I'm going to execute that function, right? And now it's available in my console, right? So I can go down to my console now and I can type my fun one, two, three, right? And I get an answer and you can do the math yourself, but X times Y is one times two, right? So that's two plus three is five, right? Um, so let's try, you know, three, two, three, right? So X times Y, is three times two is six plus three is nine, right? Um, and by the way, what I'm doing right now is very useful because this is called um, verification. We're just checking to make sure that the function does what we think it does, right? And that's a standard step. You should always do what's called a unit verification test, which means for every little part of code you write, you should run it and make sure that it's actually doing what you intend for it to do. Um, so, why don't you take this as an example and if you've got your R studio open um, go ahead and uh, try and create uh, your own function which will simply just do one thing it'll cube a single input right um, and that's what i wrote right here which create a function which cubes a single input i'm going to pause for a few seconds and uh, you can pause the video if you need longer time uh, and when we come back i'll talk through my answer Okay, I'm gonna start talking to the answer so that if you don't wanna hear it before you have your chance to finish your function, then go ahead and uh, pause the video at this point. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm assuming if you're with me, you're, you wanna know the answer at this point. So um, I actually pre-wrote the function right down here. Um, it's my cube function, right? Um, and this is something I was playing around with, so I'll take that out real quick. But it's my cube function, x right return x times x times x essentially right and that's all it needs to do and we can read it in right so to make sure it's in uh our memory it's in the environment if you go over to the environment right you'll see my cube and my fun are now in there right and now i can type my cube three right and i get 27 which is three times three is nine times three is 27 or my cube five right which is 125 right and um, what I was playing around with before there, by the way, was just kind of showing that you could, in fact, have a a, a, a special like MyCube, right? A MyCube that um, does like an additional multiplication. On it. So I could have a variable called two b, which is just some sort of scalar variable, right? And now, right, I can run the MyCube with that value. Um, oh, I have to reread it in. You see, I got the same value because I didn't reread. Okay. Um, and so now if I do my cube five, I get 250, right? 
And the idea is that if there's something where you're doing where you need to like tweak a value, but you want it to be the same for a whole bunch of runs or something like that, sometimes you want to declare it. Now, if you do this, you should probably add a comment as to why you're doing it, right? So, and in the my cube function, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but in other functions you're writing, it might make sense. So you might say, uh, this is a scalar to modify the result slightly, right? Um, and in fact, I wouldn't say this is, I'd say B is a scalar to modify the result, right? Uh, but anyways, let's go back to the original function, x times x times x times x. Hopefully you got it right. Um, and that's the basic of functions. And we're gonna use that right off the bat when we start talking about k-nearest neighbors. Uh, because if you remember, we have to figure out how to get all the nearest, all the dimensions in roughly the same space. Okay, that's it for now. Um, I'll come back and talk about k-nearest neighbors next.